Where do we all come from? When we look around the world today, we see all different kinds of people, different skin color, different eye color, different hair color, different bone structure, different height, different weight. And though we are all part of humanity, how did we all get here? And what happened that there is such diversity in the world? The Bible tells us this answer in a couple different places throughout the entire scripture. In Acts chapter 17, in verse 26, the Bible says that He, God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. From one man, God made every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. This is stated very clearly that the one man is Adam and his wife Eve. This union between the very first people God created is where we all can trace our roots to. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Everybody that has lived and everybody that is alive today can trace their ancestry to Adam and Eve. They are our common ancestor. And from Adam and Eve, come all the genetic diversity that we see in the world today. They encompassed or embodied every genetic trait that we see in humanity today. When people see Adam and Eve drawn in a children's book or illustrated in a picture Bible or something, a lot of times they are pictured as white people or brown people or something, and people try to make them look exactly like we see people today. And though we would have clearly recognized them as part of the human race, it is very possible that they did not look like any one of us as we look today, but rather they are somehow uh, the perfect version of all of us because they are ground zero of the human race. And out of them, through diversity over time and ages and different uh, factors that affect the human body, we look different. In addition to this, in the Garden of Eden, there was sin that entered in. Sin entered in, and with sin came the curse. It came the curse on mankind, and through the curse, and through sin, and through death, comes an additional breakdown of the human body, additional breakdown of what was once perfect. And through that breakdown, we see additional changes that have happened over ages to the human race. You can see this illustrated in the Bible. Uh, when we note the ages of humanity, how long people lived, you can see the breakdown begin to happen in the scripture. Some of the places in the Bible that we like to skip over are the genealogy where we see people living all these years and they had two kids and they had these kids and then they had kids and we skip over those parts. But those are a very important clue as to how things have happened over time. For example, in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 5, we see Adam's age mentioned when he died. In Genesis chapter 5 and verse 5, it says, So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. You continue to see uh, those that would live after Adam, his sons and daughters, and their sons and daughters, and their sons and daughters, living incredible amounts of years, 700 years, 800 years. The oldest person recorded in the scripture died at 969 years. But then something happens. In Genesis chapters 6 through 9, we see the flood come in God's judgment upon the world. And in the flood, we see the environment change as the wrath of God is poured out on mankind. And something about the landscape of the world changes dramatically forever. And the world from which Adam comes, we no longer recognize. We are not from that exact world. The earth does not look the way it looked then, and nature and the environment does not function in the same way it functioned before the fall and especially before the flood. After the flood, when you see people like Abraham, very quickly you see the decline in people's ages. You begin to see the curse set in and take a firmer grip on humanity. Abraham, for example, lives 175 years, which seems like a lot until compared to Adam, which lives over 900 years. Abraham lived after the flood. In fact, by the time you get to the end of the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, you see from the creation account when everything was perfect and all humanity come out of Adam and Eve, by the time you get to the end, the very last verse of the book of Genesis tells us the age of Joseph when he died. 
and Joseph died at the age of 110 years. Before we even get to the book of Exodus, people are already have, they have declined in age to ages that are even achievable today. This is in part a result of the curse of sin, of the physical breakdown of the human body because of the change in environment. Another thing that you never see mentioned early on in Genesis is a difference in skin color, uh, different races and nations emerging and fighting with each other. You don't see that till far later on. And then after the flood, and by the time we get to the book of Exodus, we see mass disease enter the world, plagues enter humanity, we see different skin colors and nations arise that go to war against each other, racism enters in by the time we see Moses appear in the Bible. All of these things, in addition to uh, genetics being dispersed throughout the world, have an effect on the change in our appearance. But make no mistake about it, Acts 17.26 is just as true today, that God made from one man every nation that lives on the face of the earth. Even atheistic scientists will agree that we all are related in some way to each other, that we can trace our genes and find common ancestors with each other. If we were able to do it all the way back to the origin point, we would find that we are related to Adam and Eve.